that has a 100% knockout ratio for every fight he's ever been in. He's from Chechnya. This dude is f***ing terrifying. I think Bivol kind of has a slight edge, but I don't know. It's a 50-50 fight. It's going to be a great fight, but I think Bivol might uh, take off with the victory. With the highly anticipated bout between Dmitry Bivol and Artur Baterbiev coming closer with only a few days left, Mike Tyson has made a shocking move by coming forward to help Bivol prepare for this upcoming fight. Meanwhile, the battle that was originally intended to take place much earlier, but was postponed due to Baterbiev's meniscus injury, is now being referred to as one of the greatest fights of the year as two undefeated heavyweight fighters sharing the same Russian heritage are going to be the main highlight of the most extravagant Riyadh season yet. Conscious of this significant fact, both fighters have been partaking in vigorous training sessions throughout the year to prepare in case of any adversity. Bivol, who is renowned for his exceptional footwork and boxing prowess, has even decided decided to employ the guidance of one of the best heavyweight fighters of this era, Mike Tyson, who is also in the gym preparing for his upcoming fight with Jake Paul. According to countless clips on social media, Bivol seems to be training and sparring in the infamous Mike Tyson Boxing Club, which adds a newfound threat to the Russian fighter who is already an absolute unit. Looking back, this might not be the first time that Mike has mentored Bivol, as almost a year ago the veteran fighter shared a video giving key pointers to Bivol about cornering his opponents with vicious jabs. After looking at Bivol's recent fights, it seems that Bivol might have taken this advice, as now it is considered to be one of his greatest strengths. Jab, uh, it, it's like, you know, key for everything. If you use more jab, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's only better every time, you know, for me, for him, for everyone. Use the jab, it's, uh, it's easy. It's, uh, it's easy advice, but it works every time. Yeah. On the other hand, Baterbiev is taking a rather classic approach based on the traditional Soviet fighting style, which focuses more on enhancing a fighter's core strength and vigor. Well known for his brutish style of fighting, which relies more on offense, this time Baterbiev is also focusing on developing an extraordinary defense based on the fact that Bivol is not someone who can be neutralized earlier on in the fight, so you have to maintain your guard while simultaneously attacking his vulnerable points. <laughs> After meticulously analyzing these distinct attributes mastered by both fighters, many analysts and experts have shared their predictions about their ultimate fates, including the former world champion in four weight classes and a Hall of Famer Roy Jones Jr., who believes that this fight will go in Bivol's favor due to the various reasons with the most notable one being Better BF's age, which might hinder him accent a fighter like Bivol who is in his prime. Roy also pointed out another major fact about how comparing the past performances of both fighters Bivol has never been dropped while Arter has faced this issue before. They, no. 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 Not pity pity. One, Bivol is 38 years old. Bivol has been down. Yes, yes, yeah. Bivol has never been down. Bivol has been in there with who at the time was pound pound the best, which was Canelo Alvarez. Made him look like nothing. So I'm not saying it's 50 50. Bivol has got everything to show me to bring it back up to 50 50. Right now, Bivol has the, has the, the advantage 60 40. Now, Bitter Beef is a hell of a guy and a hell of a fighter and has awesome power. 
but he also has been down. Regardless of these comments, Roy still commended Ardor, stating how he is one of the best punchers in the light heavyweight division who has exceptional brawn, which can cause trouble for Bivol if he is allowed free reign for too long. Hey, you know, I think Bivol has the better opportunity or the better chances going in because he's more of a boxer who also can punch. But better be if it's one is one of the best punches that this world is probably ever gonna see for his weight class. So he's always ever dangerous, but he's been down a few times too in boxing. People say it's all bound to this that other no matter you've been down. If a fighter knows you've been down, you know you can possibly put you back down if he gets you in the right place. Explaining the best strategy that will cement Bivol's victory, Roy stated that in the first few rounds, Bivol has to use his footwork to dodge any attacks or jabs from Baterbiev, because if he gets hit by one of those punches, there is a huge chance that his performance throughout the fight will get a tremendous blow. But he's so hard to deal with that Bivol gotta make sure you get to the third or fourth or fifth round, or they gotta go ahead and try to get him out right, get him out right away, but I don't think he'll do that because Bivol is not that kind of guy. But if b can use his feet to avoid the power for the first three or four rounds, b -ball should win the fight. But if he get caught, we don't know because I've never seen him get caught by a guy that punches with the velocity that uh, Arthur punches with. Dimitri, apparently gratified at this praise from an iconic fighter like Roy, stated how though he cannot undermine Baterbiev as a fighter, this time his performance will be the best one so far in his career due to the stakes being so high. In a recent interview, he added that being a fighter from a rather reclusive Russian background, a platform like the Riyadh season will not only give him a chance to establish his position in the weight class, but it will also introduce him to a much larger audience. It means a lot to me, to be honest, because Roy Jones is my one of the favorite fighters. Uh, uh, Sugar, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roy Jones, uh, Mike Tyson, Ali, they are for me, like, on, yeah. And in some period of my life, uh, they were just idols, you know, and that he's giving me this uh, uh, chances that I could win, it's, it's amazing for me, to be honest. I'm, mm. I, I didn't tell, I think, uh, I win, uh, or, but uh, of course, if I'm taking the fight, uh, I believe that I could win mm -hmm. this fight. And uh, what I can do only to be the best version of Dmitry Bivol, mm -hmm. uh, I can uh, improve my skills. Another person who believes that Bivol will triumph in this bout is surprisingly Canelo Alvarez, who has been eyeing the fighter for almost a year now in hopes of getting a rematch after their fight in 2022, which resulted in Canelo's unexpected loss. Sharing his prediction, Canelo stated that though Artur is an excellent fighter with unmatched ferocity, he is still not matched against a tactful fighter like Bivol, who knows how to deal with powerful fighters by carefully analyzing and dismantling their defense. Is there one person that comes to mind? No. The ball maybe just to get the rematch. The ball maybe. The ball, the ball is, is one of the guys. Uh, uh, I have my my rematch now to to like I say if he wins the 175 uh, undisputed. Uh, do you think he does? I think so. He has the ability to do it. You know, Betterbier is a really strong fighter. It's gonna be hard, but. After Canelo's illustrious win last Saturday against Edgar Berlanga, many people have started to speculate that the Mexican fighter will most likely move to 175 to face the winner of Bivol versus Baterbiev, and these reports might be true as during his post-fight conference, Canelo revealed that after Bivol eventful win on October 12th, he would demand a rematch probably to take place earlier next year. On the other hand, Robert Garcia, who is well known and esteemed boxing coach, thinks that at this point in his career, Canelo should move on from Bivol as this rematch might not give him the closure that he yearns for and that Bivol might not even consider this offer if he wins as the Russian fighter has stated countless times he wants to fight other notable fighters in his weight class, like David Benavidez rather than fighting a guy who is smaller than him. Robert stated, I don't think that Canelo should do this rematch. He should not look forward to it. This being said, Robert clearly believes that this fight between Bivol and Baterbi will be an excellent event due to the involvement of two of the best fighters in the division with very different fighting styles. However, regardless of this, according to Robert, Bivol's flawless technique and superb boxing IQ will allow him to get an upper hand early on in the fight, which will result in a decision victory for him, but with the condition 
condition that he avoids getting hit by Baterbiev, because in that case, he might not return to normal. Baterbiev is 39, he's gonna be 40 very soon. Uh, I, you don't get better. Be born for my decision. I, I think so too. Bivol is a very talented fighter, awkward, very effective. He is. Uh, I, I got Bivol by decision. I'm gonna fight on the outside, just, just throw fucking combinations. Boom, 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 and move. Just, I, I just see that happening. Sharing the same ideas as Robert, David Benavidez, who has sparred with Bivol in the past, thinks that even though both fighters have their own plus points with Bivol being more methodical and Baterbiev being like an untamed beast, Bivol might have a more prominent chance at winning this fight because he tends to be very cautious and sensible, which allows him to adapt to his opponents very easily. Like many other analysts, David thinks that Bavol might also take advantage of the fact that Baterbiev has been dropped before, which makes him susceptible to sudden precise attacks. I think, um, I think Bivol kind of has a slight edge, but I don't know, it's a 50-50 fight, it's gonna be a great fight, but I think Bivol might uh, take off with the victory. Um, you know, they're both extremely talented fighters very well. They're two different type of fighters though. B-Ball is a boxer. He moves around a lot, but he's solid. Uh, Berta Beeb is a fucking, he's a train. He just comes at you, takes shots. It takes shots to give shots. So what I'm looking at for this fight is B-Ball has the power to hurt Berta Beeb because Berta Beeb has been hurt by uh, Bozen or Alexander. So and then Bivol, in my, in Bivol, I, you know, as far as both, Bivol cracks harder than, than Alexander. Even though the majority of the boxing industry seems to be on Bivol's side in this bout, they can't ignore the fact that Baterbiev is a tenacious puncher eminent for his ability to ruthlessly drop his opponents in the earlier rounds, which is exactly what happened in his last fight with Callum Smith earlier this year, where he stopped the big burly fighter in the seventh round with a spectacular knockout resulting in him continuing his flawless streak of 20 knockout wins. Talking about Baterbiev's immaculate record, Joe Rogan revealed that Baterbiev is the only boxer in the world who has not only maintained the record of getting all his wins by a knockout, but has also been successful at attaining major world titles with only 20 professional fights under his belt. He's the only world champion that's in boxing today that has a 100% knockout ratio for every fight he's ever been in. He's from Chechnya. This dude is terrifying. Joe added that despite being somewhat of a mystery to the American fighting fans, Better BF has climbed up the ranks to become one of the best fighters in his division. Divulging into what sets him apart from his fellow contenders, Joe explained that even though many combat athletes tend to get worn out after age 35, Better BF has still maintained an exceptional physique, allowing him to overpower much younger guys than him, like Joe Smith Jr., Callum Smith, and Callum Johnson. According to Joe, this upcoming fight with Bivol might be the best fight of his career, and if he ends up getting a victory, he will be hailed as the best fighter and champion of the light heavyweight division of all time. Every punch that he throws is dangerous. He's an interesting guy because like he's a power punching boxer. Like his boxing skill is excellent, but he's such a power puncher. He's the most exciting guy uh, in that division right now. He's really uh, very, very interesting. And then there's that Bivol guy who just beat Canelo. Did you see that fight? Mm -hmm. Same division. Yeah. Woo, two Russians. Being a first-hand witness of the sheer power that Baterbiev possesses, his past opponent and a major contender for the light heavyweight titles, Callum Johnson, stated that the power he experienced from Ardor on the day of their fight was something that he will never forget, as since then, no fighter has ever come close. One aspect that Callum explained in this interview has really caught the attention of many fans and experts about how Ardor does not get the credit that he deserves, as he is not only a ferocious fighter, but he is also a genius inside the ring who knows how to lure out his opponents till they get comfortable with him, which furnishes him with an excellent opportunity to strike them down with a single clear shot. Jokingly, Callum even claimed that this was one of the fights that still gives him nightmares to this day due to Berbiev's intimidating persona. So because I'm gonna have nightmares tomorrow. <laughs> nah, do you know what? When I was in there, it's weird because you don't really feel it in there. Obviously, he's, the man's got tremendous powers. So obviously, his record speaks for itself. He's put every man down he's ever boxed. But when I was in there, I was genuinely thinking, do you know, he, he ain't all that bad, this. And I felt like every time I was pushing him back and he was grabbing when I was getting close, and I was saying to Joe in the corner, I can feel him weakening, Joe. I can feel him weakening. 
but you know he just lured me into that trap didn't he and he got me you know he, he, the man's unbelievable he's powerful pound isn't he however a notable thing that callum highlighted is that even though baterbf might not be showing any signs of slowing down age is something that will always be the biggest enemy of any fighter as it is notorious for suddenly striking out of nowhere especially at someone like Arter, who recently had a major knee injury that can very soon become his weak point as it might not heal the way that it once used to you know you gotta look people say about better bev's age but he is getting on he is like touching 40 but again you know someone like that's lived the life he's shown no signs of slowing down in his fights um, recently he's coming back from knee surgery how's that going to affect him you know i think the f the thing is is the age going to affect him because at some point it will um whether whether it's now or not will the knee surgery affect him being someone who has faced both fighters before, Joe Smith Jr. explained that in a fight like this, there can never be a clear prediction because both fighters are equally dangerous. Joe, who lost to Baterbiev in a very dramatic fashion in 2022 with a round two stoppage, reiterated the same points as Callum about Archer catching him off guard after pulling him in the false pretense of security. Joe stated, Whenever we got into a clinch or anything, I felt like I was stronger. Like I didn't feel like he was overpowering or anything of me, but he caught me with the accurate shot right on my ear right behind it and I didn't even feel it. My legs just went down and never came back. So I guess he does get pretty good power. Power. Joe added that though this elaborate scheme from Arter might have worked against fighters like him and Callum, this strategy will backfire Axe a hawk-eyed fighter like Bivol, who can judge his opponent's overall game plan and weak points in just a few rounds, allowing him a superiority in the ring. But according to Joe, if Better BF starts the onslaught of his punches early on without any gimmicks, he will be successful in defeating Bivol. Joe stated, I really can't pick a favorite because I think they're both great. Bavel has that in and out movement and a little bit more agility I'd say but you know it's gonna be a great fight though the fans and analysts are excited about this fight this time they are also looking forward to the superb undercards including the one between Jai Opataya and Jack Massey for the IBF cruiserweight title excited about a chance at fighting in a Riyadh season Jai stated that the Saudi involvement especially that of his excellency Turkey Alashik has paved the way for these marvelous matchups that otherwise would have never materialized Giving his analysis of the main undisputed event between Bivol and Better Biev, Jai stated that for both the fighters, this will be an excellent shot at not only getting the much coveted light heavyweight titles and becoming a reigning champ, but it will also open more doors for them in the future. That's a crack of cards for me. The, the whole card's good, you know. Um, but yeah, that main event, yeah, that's awesome, you know. It's the typical, you know, walk forward strong dude against a real technician that just moves and moves. So. It's, it's a really exciting fight, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to tuning in. Legendary coach and trainer Teddy Atlas, who has been a fundamental part of the boxing industry for decades, also thinks that this new surge of events and sensational cards has allowed boxing to become a much more public sport, which was something deemed impossible just a few years ago, when even a bout between local fighters was unheard of. You know, where the money is and where Turkey Alice Sheik uh, right now is the pace of boxing. That That's the funny thing about it, if you're going to get down to the the reality of it. You know, people say, is Canelo the face of boxing? You know, is Fury the face of boxing? No, Turkey Alice Sheik right now is the face of boxing because he's making these cards, these fights possible. Um, you can put you can put whatever you want with it, but at the end of the day, you got to have a good matchmaker. You have to make the matches that obviously are going to make the people satisfied. Talking about Better Bave, Teddy compared the 39-year-old fighter to the legendary Sonny Liston based on his vicious fighting style, which is neat something that is very commonly seen in fighters of this era. Teddy also addressed the claims about Baterbiev's age and how this might hinder him from beating a much younger Bival, stating how if that was the case, he should have expired as a fighter a long time ago after he turned 35, but he didn't and continued to fight big guys. To further clarify his point, Teddy added that one of the most important things that a fighter like Arter possesses is his power, and it has been proven countless times that the last thing to leave any fighter is not his skills or precision, but his power. Better be if his Sonny Liston and John Wick melted together. <laughs> He's the boogeyman. <clears throat> well, what is, what, what is, how do you pronounce that again, Chris? Uh, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga, whatever. Baba Yaga, yep. 
That's him. Baba Yaga. He not only imposes his physicality and his skills on you, he imposes his will. Regardless of this ability that Baterbiev has, Teddy still thinks that Bivol might be a step further from him as he not only has the power in his body, but he also has an excellent boxing IQ, which has proven to be one of his strongest attributes. Recalling the fight that Bivol had with Canelo where he beat him, Teddy emphasized that for a fighter like Bivol, it does not matter if the guy standing in front of him is the best puncher because deep down he knows that he has the required expertise to beat them down. But the most important thing, he's got to have it up here. And that's why I give Bevo a real good shot. Because I believe that he is strong up stop, upstairs in the attic, not just downstairs in the basement. He, again, he, he knows what he has to do to keep a guy like this off balance. But you have to have that fortitude to do it, to go through the fire to go through the rounds late when the guy is imposing himself on you. I, I believe Bebo is the guy that has the whole package. Greg Hackett, who is a renowned boxing coach and analyst, also thinks that this fight will be remembered as one of the best fights in the light heavyweight division, as it is not only the fight for the undisputed title, but also because it is between the best puncher and the most tactful fighter in an already saturated division. This is one of the best fights we're gonna get this year. Oh. Two, two, two monsters. Oh. According to Greg, the winner of this fight will be Baterbiev based on his extraordinary boxing prowess and inhuman power, which allows him to easily overpower his opponents. Known for his statistical analysis, Greg advised Baterbiev to end the fight with a knockdown and not allow it to go into the hands of the judges, as in that way Bivol might win as he is much more technical and systematic while landing his shots. Great fight, entertaining fight. We might see it twice. And, and, and. I got Bibble, I mean, better be having the first one. I think he, I think he's just too vicious for Bibble. You think he stops Bibble? Yeah, he's gonna have to stop Bibble. You can't beat Bibble on the car. Bibble got too much game with him to beat him on the car. You gotta, you gotta take him deep water and break him. Push. Along with Arter, Greg also shared some important pointers for Bivol as well, which might help him in this fight, as there is no way that he can approach better Bive directly and expect to come out unscathed. He stated that the best chance at survival for Bivol would be to not let Better BF push him to the corner where he does not get the chance to land any punches. And for this purpose, Greg disclosed that Bivol should observe the fighting tapes of the legendary fighter Andre Ward, as he had the exceptional ability to study his opponents while simultaneously landing and planning his next move. Or in between time. So he got to set up good shit, break him down, and, 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 and pick his spots. And then the last four rounds, he got to win convincingly. He, if, 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 if Bibble want to beat, beat better be at, he got to study Andre Ward. Andre Ward is the best at pacing and placing and, and just being, being perfect. He wanted the best at being perfect and doing, the, doing what you have to do to win a fight. Meanwhile, with many people commenting on Baterbiev's power and age and its relevance to his upcoming fight with Bivol, Better Bive seems to be unfazed by these stating how he does not seem to be slowing with age on the other hand. He's getting more and more experience based on his extensive amateur career, which has aided him in fighting different types of fighters because after all the experience garnered over years of hard work, he has become confident in his abilities and identifying what moves he should make and what tactics he should avoid. Yeah, it's, it's good life. Like you know, when, when you get getting older, you be more smarter. You know, ah, smarter. so you're learning. Yeah, I'm learning more. It's, okay. it's good. When you uh, you are young, you do like uh, ten repetition to get like one good one. You know, but when you get older, you do good one repetition to to get them. You know, <laughs> you do less repetition than. Yeah, when he was young. Yeah. Yeah. Wholeheartedly supporting Baterbiev's claims about not being affected by his age, eminent reporter and analyst Ade Oladipo weighed in on the fact that if any other fighter was coming out of a critical joint injury like Arter at the ripe old age of 39, many people would have disregarded him as old news, but that is bought a possibility for Baterbiev because of the excruciating training regime and tenacious mindset the man has been able to achieve over his years as a fighter. He just looks like a machine. I've interviewed him. His hands are 
fucking enormous he's grip he does all this crazy stuff like any other fighter any other fighter coming off the injuries that he's had in recent years to make his case more solid i recalled all the fights that baterbiev had from the start of his professional career with each of them ending in a spectacular knockout victory for him and no chance for his opponent to make a comeback with only one exception of callum johnson who is the only fighter till now who was able to drop the russian beast to the canvas beat tavares club beat joe smith and he's not beating them he's breaking them down he's breaking them down callum johnson had the nerve to hit him hard and make Baturbiev go down, got up, broke him. Uh, Marcus Brown broke him. Joe Smith tried to have a firefight with him, destroyed. Vozdik was doing well. Olympic gold medalist was doing well. WBC champion had just beaten Adonis Stevenson, was doing well. Baturbiev just got to him. Being a diehard supporter of Bivol, Ada claimed the younger fighter for his seamless boxing style, which has garnered him a lot of attention over the years. Considering this a stylistic match made in heaven, Aid stated that this fight would be one of the most memorable fights of boxing, especially in the light heavyweight division, as the public would finally witnessed the true essence of boxing between two of the best fighters who are not only battling for the title of undisputed but they are aware of the fact that whoever wins this fight will then move in to become the best light heavyweight fighter of all time even when he's just hitting the bag or doing the pad work that thing he does where he just kind of just in and out in and out in and out and it, it it's perfect honestly it's it's fucking perfect so you have someone in Baturbiev that will just break you down. And by the way, Baturbiev can box as well. Go and look at the amateur record. He's, he's got a lot of boxing ability there. But you've got someone that will break you down and we've got someone that just is poetry in motion when they box and they're going to meet. It's, honestly, it's going to be... It's going to be sensational, I think. So in the end, who do you think will win this fight? Will it be the 39-year-old beast who claims another victim to become the undefeated champion of the division? Or will it be the younger and more reserved Bivol who will get the victory? Make sure to tell us about your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to our channel.